new proclamation. What wise men, great men, medical men, professional people have not been able to do, God will do it. All those things that are forgotten, your forgotten strength, your forgotten power, your forgotten revelation, everything you said, I had a dream long ago. And I thought, this is what I will do. I've forgotten now, your forgotten vision will come up again. Passion will come up again. Revelation will come up again. New life will come up again in your life in Jesus' name. Only Christ Jesus has the power of this new year. An unforgettable encounter beckons. We are connecting to the God of wonders this new year for salvation and deliverance. Welcome GCK to Asaba. Delta State, Nigeria, January 26th to 31st, 2023. 1600 hours GMT daily and Global Sunday Worship at all 700 hours GMT. Also featuring ministers and professionals conference with Impact Academy for Youth, Young Adults and Young Professionals. It's a new year of wonders this 2023. From the Niger Delta, the oil of anointing will be transported by satellite and all our social media links to over 150 countries of the world. Join the team in GCK audience as the man appointed by God, the convener of GCK, Pastor Dr. W.F. Komoi, connects the world to an unforgettable encounter with the God of Wonders. Glorious music ministrations by choirs from nations across the world with guest music ministration by Jonathan Lee. Darkness gone. Yeah. Premature death cancelled. Yeah. Yours is now to reap the benefit. GCK, the, the gospel, gospel to every creature. Let us pray. Our Father and our God, we thank you for the Bible study tonight again. We thank you because you have not left us in darkness. Those who do not know you, who do not know your word, who do not know your requirements are in darkness. They don't know where they are, they don't know the direction they are going, they don't know the dangers around them, they do not know the way unto the light and the eternal bliss and happiness and joy with God. But you have given us the privilege of having the light shine across our pathway. And we thank you because of the light of the word of God which you shed abroad in our hearts on our path every time as we come in here to study father we are depending upon the holy spirit tonight that he will enlighten us he will illuminate us he will make us to know the truth as it is in christ in jesus name by your word and your spirit we pray you lead us on until we will see you face to face in glory in jesus name we pray Tonight was still on a study of the Epistle of Paul to the Colossians. Already eight studies in the Epistle are taking us through chapter 1, verses 1 through to 29. Now we're going to chapter 2. And we're looking at something very essential and important today in the ministry of Paul the Apostle which is a challenge to us to also have it in our ministry as well. If you look at chapter 2 verse 1, you will understand why the title of the study tonight is Ministry to Faraway Saints. 
o ye yo wa yi o ibi ti a se pe akole eko bibeli ti asale ni ise ran se si awon eyan mi ma ti o wa ni okere look at colossians chapter 2 verse 1 wo kolose ori keje ese ikini for i would that ye knew what great conflict i have for you and for them at Laodicea, and for as many as have not seen my face in the flesh. Nitori e me fe ki e nyiki o man, bi wa ya e ja ti mo nifo yi ti kotu, a ti fun a wara la dekia, a ti fun i yi a wanti koti i ryo ju me ni pati a ra. Paul the Apostle had a ministry to the saints at Colossae, to the saints at Laodicea, and to the saints that had not even seen a face in the flesh. He still had a ministry to these saints that were out of sight and far away people. Ni ye Paul Apostoli oni se ran se fun awon eyan mi ma ti o wa ni Kolose, awon eyan mi ma ti o wa ni Laodicea, ati awon eyan mi ma ti o wa ni Okere. Ba kan na ni oni se ran se yi fun awon ti ko ti ri oju re ni pa ti ara. If you have been following through on the studies we have been having, you know that false teachers had come to Kolose laboring to confuse the Colossian brethren and to destroy their faith. And even though Paul had never been to Colossae and he was not responsible for planting the church in that city, yet he was concerned for them. Bi o ti le je pe Paul Apostle ko ti da se re wo ko lo se ri ati pe o nkan ya le so pe eni ti o da ejo ko lo se si le ni akoko yi ti be o ni ka anu ati ejo kan fun awon eni ko lo se He could not immediately go to them because he was in the prison at Rome Ko se se fun o lati lo si odo awon eni awon yi ni akoko yi tori pe o wa ni ogbe won ni Rome and yet these Colossians needed such ministry such ministration greater than what Epaphras the resident pastor could offer to them. Awa eni ame ma kolo se yi wasi ni lo iru ise ran se yi iru eti oje ipe e pa frata eti oje o lu so agota to wa la ni wa ko le pe fun ni iru akoko yi. E pa frat knew the problems that the Christians at kolo se are. E pa frat o ma wa la ti awa Christian to wa ni kolo se ni. And he was the one that reported the situation to Paul the apostle. O lo si mu yi to Paul the apostle le ti. Look at Colossians chapter one from verse seven. Wo la ti kolo se ori kini ese as ye also learned of Epaphras, our dear fellow servant, who is for you a faithful minister of Christ. At the end, it is called Lord Epaphras, you know, say like by our Lupe, and it is your Lord, you know, say Christine Kowa, who also declared unto us your love in the Spirit. Not only that, Epaphras was a fervent minister, a fervent preacher, and a very faithful, prayerful minister of God. Look at Colossians chapter 4 verse 12. Epaphras, who is one of you, a servant of Christ, saluted you. Always laboring fervently for you in prayers that ye may stand perfect and complete in all the will of God, for I bear him record that he has a great zeal for you and them that are in Laodicea and them in Herapolis. Epaphra, and it is a in a circle, Onki, Iwaya, Jagbadura, Niba, Gogo, Funi, here, and you kill the Duroniki, at Niki, Funi, no Gogo, if you're Loro. Nitori mo jeri repi o ni tara kuko fun yin ati fun awon ti o wa ni Laodicea ati awon ti o wa ni Eradpoli Epaphras was a faithful minister Epaphras je iran si oloto fervent in spirit o gbo ni igbonu okan wanting to be of benefit to the people at Laodicea and Colosse o fe je iran lowo fun awon ti o wa ni Laodicea ati Colosse he was a dependable minister of god o je iran si olorun ti o se gbe kenle and yet he knew that there were problems and there were areas of ministry that the colossian brethren needed which he could not fully completely minister to them he went to paul the apostle to report the case and paul the apostle now when he was at rome he sent this epistle to the people at Colossae, ministry to the faraway saints to the out of sight saints negative epaphras yotima wala atiru la sibo ti awan ijo kolose ni 
ki o si ma pe ohun ko le ipapa wa lati soro na o so paul lo o si ti yin to paul le ti paul o si wa ti nu ogbe won ti o wa ni oromo lati ran ipa fraye lati do yan ju soro awon eniyan won yi awon ti ko fojuri if you look at the latter part at the very last part of the epistle after the last verse of the last chapter you will see written in small small letters written from rome to the colossians by Tychicus and Onesimus that is Paul the apostle wrote this epistle and he put the epistle in the hands of Tychicus and Onesimus and he said I cannot travel there now I cannot go there now I am separated by distance from them here am I in Rome here there they are at Colossae go and give this epistle to them to build them up <laughs> ni pa isale nibi ti o pari iwe epistle ti an ke kan ninu re yi wa sa ki esi pe akon ti isale patapata pe akon lati romu lo si awon ara kolose lati owo titiku ati onismu eleeti o fi han wa wi pe paul apostle ni akoko yi ko lanfani lati rinrin ajo lati lo ba awon eyan na ni kolose o wa ni romu o si nti owo awon titiku ati onismu lati fi iwe yi so wo si won it is very similar to what is happening in amis right now o fara jo nkan to sele laarin wa ni sisi yi that even though i am not with you in the physical we are separated by distance and yet that we are separated by distance doesn't mean that i cannot exercise an effective ministry towards you even though you are out of my sight and even though you are far away so to say nitori na bi o ti le je pe ni akoko yi n ko le si laarin yin ti o dabi eni pe ona jijin o pe wa ni ya bayi sugbon eleyi pe ona jijin o pe wa ni ya ko di mi lowo lati ma si oju se mi ati se ran se mi lati le mu yin dagba ninu olorun bi o ti le je pe n ko fojuri yin we talk more about that later but to see paul the apostle at alia shown the features of the ministry of god appointed minister saju eleyi wa ti mo to ma so nipa eleyi si sugbon saju mo fe so fun e ri pe paul apostle je je bi a se ko o ti so nipa o ti o wa ni mi se ran se eni ti olorun yan now he demonstrates the primary requisite for the ministry this is see you are fi o ti o je won akoko ninu ise ran se na o fi han bayi and we need a lot to learn as ministers of god and of the gospel from paul the apostle as ni opupo lati ko gaga bi ran se olorun lati odo paul apostle he had experience with god o ni riri pelu olorun so must we have experience with god if we are going to be real appointed ministers of god ba kan na ni awa na gbodo ni ba se ko ti o dara pelu olorun ti a ba fe je apostle olorun ti olorun yan yeah spiritual knowledge only mati emi knowledge of god knowledge of christ knowledge of the gospel in fact it sums everything up to the mystery of the kingdom of god he had the knowledge spiritual knowledge by which he could serve and minister to the people of god only mo olorun only mo christi only mo ni pa irere o ti e ko gbogbo re jo o pe ni awon ejile o ni awon emo ejile won yi lati le fi sin awon eni olorun he had revelation of truth which is essential to salvation only fi han ti o ti to ele ti o ti se pataki pataki nipa ti igbala some people have knowledge but the knowledge they have is not essential to salvation is not leading us to eternal life but Paul the apostle had revelation of truth which is essential to salvation and when lo mi ran won ni imo sugba imo won ko ni se pelu igbala awon imo ti ko ni se pelu ti o dari eniyan si ni igbala ni won ni sugba ni ha ti paul apostle o ni bi han ti o ti to ele ti o se pataki ni pa ti igbala he had leadership ability o ni pa gaga bi adari he had preaching power o ni ipa lati wa su he had boldness o ni igboya he had faith o ni igbagbo he had the gifts of the spirit o ni awon ebo ti emi and some people depend only on these things or a combination of some of them awon lo mi ran won si gbe kele awon kan ninu nkan won yi abi awon apapo nkan won yi but beyond all these qualities in the life of paul he also had and demonstrated christ like love for the church lo la bo lo lu bori gbogbo re ni pe bi paul apostle se ni nkan won yi o fun ni ife ti o jo ti christi and the reason he loved the church so much is because he loved the lord o ti o fa ti o si si feran ejo lopolopo ni wi pe o feran oluwa lopolopo this christ like sacrificial love is the one thing a minister must have above all the other qualities of his life 
if he be able to truly serve the people of God. Iru ife bi ti Christi yi, ife e pare ni rubo yi, o ni on ko se mani, ti o bado wa ni nwa ye ran si o loro, ti o ba fe wulo la ti je on ko unpi ran awa gwa loro. And in today's study we are going to see how this love was manifested in caring for the people of God, manifesting a caring ministry towards the Colossians and others. Ni no e kwa ti o ni, la o ri bi o ti si, ife e a ti e bi ti sa ni kwa wè ni a ye, han. There are four points we want to look at. Number one, ekeni, love for out of sight sake. Number two, ekeji, comfort for troubled heart. Number three, ekata, brotherly love within a united church. Number four, ekeri, assurance through spiritual knowledge. Number one, ekeni, love for out of sight sake. Colossians chapter 2, verse 1, Ese ekeni, for I would that ye knew what great conflict I have toward for you and for them at Laodicea and for as many as have not seen my face in the flesh. Nitori emi fe ki eyin ki o mo bi iwa ya ja ti mo ni fun yin ti ko tu ati fun awon ara Laodicea ati fun iye awon ti ko ti ri oju mi nipa ti ara. Verse 5. Ese ikarun. For though I I be absent in the flesh, yet am I with you in the spirit, joining and beholding your order and the steadfastness of your faith in Christ. Nitori pe bi emi ko ti le si lodo yin ni ara sugbon emi nbe lodo yin ni emi mo yo mo tin ti esi eto yin ati iduro sisin igbagbo yin ninu Christi you see Paul the apostle did not allow distance to hinder or limit his ministry to the people of God wa sa ki esi ni pe Paul apostle ko fi aye gba ona jijirere lati bi se ran se re lowo si awon eyan olorun in verse 1 he mentions that he is having great conflict great agony great outpouring of heart and great burden upon his heart in ministering to the people that have not seen his face in the flesh. Ni ese ke ni wa ri pe o so wi pe o ni wa ya ija ye du okan ti o jinle lokan won fu awon iran si awon eniyan mi ma ti onko ti fojuri. In verse 5 it says even though he is absent from the people at Colosse in the flesh yet in the spirit is with them. In joy is with them. Is looking at their order. Is looking at the organization. Is looking at everything they are doing in the worship, and is beholding and appreciating and encouraging their steadfastness in the faith. Ni ase karu so we pay bi o koti le si la ni wani pati ara to go on belo don wani pati ni o on belo don wani pati ayo o on si ke si go go e to wan ati go go ti wan se ati go go bi ati mu ite ran se Christi ati da go wan ni no Christi ti here this is similar to Christ's ministry ele i para join se ran se ise ran se Christi because you know Christ love for the church made him give himself for the church o tori ki o ma pe ife Christi fun ijo o je ki o fi ara re fun ijo and yet his earthly ministry did not was not the final thing his ministry for the church did not terminate with his earthly ministry nitori pe ise ran se re si ijo ko do pe nigbati o kuro ninu aye yi so he is in heaven now and we are on earth and we are separated physically by great distance he still continues to minister to all bi o ti le je pe orun lo wa ni sisin yi ti a wa si wa ninu aye ti ona gbo oro si pe wa ni yaba yi si be o si se ran se re fun awon ti a wa ninu aye because we are told in hebrews chapter 20 chapter 7 verse 25 that is making a transgression for us even now nitori pe aso fun wa ninu eberu ori keje ese ke dogbon wi pe ni sisin yi o si si be fun wa o si pe fun wa in john chapter 14 verses 1 to 3 you know what is doing now is still preparing a place for us is still serving us in jo ma pe nu ju anu ori kerin la ese ke ni si keta o si pese aye si le fun wa bayi o si wa bayi in john chapter 16 verse 7 he'll pray the father and the father because he pleads for us because he prays for us, because he demands for us, will send the Holy Ghost to all. Nino ju alu ori kere di logo ese ekeje o be baba ni tori ki o si si pe fo wa o be be fo wa baba si re mi mi ma re si wa. And we are told in Mark chapter 16 verses 19 and 20 that the Lord went away to heaven, and yet the disciples went forth 
and the Lord was walking with them. Nino ma kori kere di logo ese ogo aripe olu swa Jesu Christi frara re ogo ke losoro suba bi awa pose li ti jade lo ti won si tena olu wa nba won si tena. In Revelation chapter one verses eighteen to twenty, we are told that he still holds the candle, the stars in his hand. That is the ministers of the gospel. He's still keeping them. He's supporting them. He's encouraging them and anointing them. It's far away in heaven, where here on earth we seem to be out of sight, and yet he's still ministering to all. Then no, we we be huh? Only can you say that the logo see as you go as of where we pay Jesus see more and more now. One now, Lord, I want near and see all Lord. I want near and see that you so do. I want you. Oh, what Lord? I want you. I want you. See best, see best. Oh, see you and see and see all Lord. Paul's love for the church was not different from Christ's love for the church. If Paul love we just go yet to see if if he loved the saints of God, even though these saints were out of sight and far away from him. Though he was separated by some distance from churches at Colossae and Laodicea and other places, yet he loved them and he carried on the ministry on their behalf. To buy fair as you want, on test what you. But Paul the Apostle was not the only one. Paul the Apostle in the Old Testament were people like Nehemiah and Daniel. No, but the Mulala and Yahweh have been Nehemiah to Daniel. That even though they were far away from the people that they loved and the people they would like to minister to, they still had a burden, they still had a concern, they still had intercessory ministry and even teaching ministry, and they had a pleading kind of ministry on behalf of these people that are far away and out of sight. Nehemiah chapter 1 from verse 1. The words of Nehemiah the son of Aka liar. And it came to pass in the month of Chislew, in the twelfth year, as I was in Chusan, the palace. Or on Nehemiah, or my Akalaya, or to send in no or to kill you, Ni or Gordo, Nibatimo, and Susania, that Ananea, one of my brethren, came, he and certain men of Judah, and I asked them concerning the Jews which had escaped which were left of the captivity and concerning Jerusalem. Ni anani, okani no awan arakunri mi, ohun ati awan okunri kan, lati juda wa sodo mi, mo ti biwan lere, mi ti awan ara juda ti o sala, ti o kuni, ti o kuni no, ti o kuni no awan ibeko, ati mi ti Jerusalemu. And they said unto me that the remnant that are left of the captivity there in the province are in great affliction and reproach. The wall of Jerusalem also is broken down, and the gates thereof are burnt with fire. What if we pay away Yoku? She have a silly nibe, Nino away Bekoni Beriko, Benino, while Lanla at Yego, or the Jerusalem was still Wolule, as you see in the Corregula. And it came to pass when I heard these words that I sat down and wept and mourned certain days and fasted and pray before the God of heaven. By the praying and fasting, he was ready ministry to them and taking their needs and problems to the sight of the Lord. And eventually God used him, he sent him there, he now went to them directly. He was able to minister to them directly. Exactly what Paul the Apostle did. That even though he was far away from Colossae, from chapter 1 we learned he had been praying for them. He was praying for them. And in this chapter 2, verse 1, it said, I had great conflict 
for you. Ni ori ke jese ki ni lo ti sope mo ni wa ya ija kupo fun yi. And now in writing to them he was teaching them and counseling them even though they were out of his sight. Ni bi o te npo we si wa, o npo we si wa, o ngba won ni mara bi o ti le je pe ko foju ri won. If you look at Daniel chapter 9 verses 2 to 4 you will see the same thing. Yo ba wo Daniel ori ke san lati ese keji si ese kerin o nkan na ni wa bapa di nibe. That though Daniel was not at Jerusalem. Bi o ti le je pe Daniel o si ni Jerusalem. He was far away in Babylon. Ni Babylon lona jiji rere lo wa. Yet he was ministry to them by praying, si. not only by praying by receiving prophecy from the Lord and writing down preserving it for the edification and the learning of the people of Israel and the whole church. He se pe o n gba dura fun won nikan be lo n gba so tele lati odo luwa fun won ki o tin si akon sile re pe awon ti yo ba ka yo je mu lokan le ati mu duro fun won. Let's look at Revelation chapter 1. E je ki a wo ewe epi han ori temi from verse 9. Lati ese ikesan I John who also am your brother and companion in tribulation and in the kingdom and patience of Jesus Christ was in the isle that is called Patmos for the word of God and for the testimony of Jesus Christ Emi Juanu arakunrin yin ati alaba pe pelu yin ninu wa ala ati ati ijoba ati suru ti nbe ninu Jesu wa ninu erekusu ti an pe ni Patmo nitori oro Olorun ati nitori eri Jesu Kristi I was in the spirit on the Lord's day and heard behind me a great voice as of a trumpet mo wa ninu emi le ojo oluwa mo si gbo ohun lakan leyin mi bi iro ipe saying i am alpha and omega the first and the last and what thou seest write in a book and send it unto the seven churches which are in asia unto ephesus and unto smyrna and unto pergamos and unto thyatira and unto sardis and unto philadelphia and unto laodicea o wi pe emi ni alpha ati omega eni saju ati eni ikeyin o ti wo ba si ri ton si ni iwe ti o si ran si awon ijo meje si efesu ati si mina ati si pagamo ati si taitaria ati sadi ati philadelphia ati si laodicea even though john was out of sight from these seven churches in asia the lord sent him and he told him your ministry has not terminated to these people even though you are out of sight right unto them and the lord gave him the message he sent the message of correction the message of uh, commendation the message of encouragement the message that will help them to prepare for the coming of the lord he sent it to these seven churches even though these seven churches were out of sight for john the beloved bi o ti le je pe ni akoko yi juanu olufe ko fojuri awon ejo meje ti o wa ni ekun asia yi sugbo olorun fun ni oju se wi pe ise ran se re ko ti dawo duro nitori pe o ko si laarin won bayi nitori na olorun wa ran ise lati odo lati enu re ti awon ijo yi o si kowe si won ti awon ijo mejeje won yi lati le ko won lati le to won lati bu ori yin fun won nitori pe o si je ni ti olorun ran si won bi o ti e ri bi won ko ri loju ko we thank god that god has not changed adupe lo olorun pe olorun ko yi pada the same god who allowed nehemiah to still be ministering to the people at Jerusalem do distance separated them that same god who allowed daniel to be ministering to the people of Jerusalem and the people of Israel even though distance separated them that same god is still at work today he grant me the pastor and the general superintendent to still keep on ministering to you even though distance separates us you seem to be out of sight you seem to be far away Olorun kan na ti o ran Nehemiah lowo lati je ohun elo abi eni ti o si teran se fun awon eniyan Jerusalem bi o ti le je pe won ko si ni bi ti a ti le fojuri ara won Olorun yi kan na ti ko yi pada ti o je ki Daniel ko se ran se ran se fun awon eyan to wa ni Jerusalem ati awon eyan Israel lapapo bi o ti le je pe ipin yawo laarin won fun akoko die Olorun yi ko yi pada o na lo si ran mi lowo gaja bi olusu agotan ati alakoso alakoso lapa olu olusu agotan yin lapapo lati le ma si teran se fun yin bi o ti le je yi pe afa ni ko si lati wa laarin yin bayi the same thing he did with Paul the same thing he did with John the beloved and the same thing is doing with us today we should be grateful to God that he gives us the insight into God appointed ministry 
so that he gives us that same ministry today and though we are out of sight and separated by distance the ministry continues effectually o kan na lo se pelu paul apostoli o kan na lo se pelu john olufe o kan na ni o si ran wa lowo lati ma se lole bi o ti le je wi pe ipe yawa la rin wa ti aku foju ri ara wa bayi sugbo fun wa ni se ran se ni ti olorun yan lati ma se na fun yin by prayer by teaching by instruction by counseling i can still continue ministering to you and i pray that this ministry will be so directed by the spirit of god and will develop edify challenge and get every one of us ready for the coming of the lord in jesus name ni pa ese ran si adura iponi ati itoni olorun si nlo mi lati le ma se nkan wa yi fun yi bi o ti le je pe a ko si la rin ara wa adura mi si ni pe olorun yo ma dari ise ran se yi ni pa se mi re to be ge ti gbogbo wa yo si di alagbara ta fi lo ko si si ta fi mura sun bi bo oluwa ni oruko jesus now point two comfort for trouble ha ipa ikeji itunu fun awon kan ti o ni damu here paul talks about the purpose of his ministry to the colossians that were far away ni ni paul apostoli wa so ere di se ran se re fun awon ala kolose to jina rere look at chapter 2 verse 2 of colossians wo ori keji ese ikeji kolose that their heart might be comforted ki a le tu okan won ninu that their heart might be comforted ki a le tu okan won ninu why did they need comfort and strengthening in their spirit bi ninu itunu ati imulokan le paul had knowledge of the problem at colosse that needed urgent attention paul ni mo wa lati o wa ni ijo colosse ti o si ye ko tete da si false prophets and false teachers with erroneous doctrine had come to colosse awon eleko eke awon elesi eke won ti wa si ijo colosse they were troubling the hearts of the people with error and with deception and with lies won ti etan eke ati isin eke da kan we eyan iru you see error falsehood and misinterpretation of the word of god will always bring the heart to problem ki o yi o wi pe awon eko eke awon etan eke awon eko to lodi igba gbogbo ni o ma mu ipururu ba okan you see false doctrine affects the heart false more than any other thing je ki o yi o wi pe awon eko eke ibi ti won ma doju se won ko lakoko o ni okan and for these colossians their hearts had been affected won ijo kolose yi a si si do kan won ru the wrong interpretation of the people that came to kolose at was affecting the hearts of the people itu meke ti awon to wa si kolose nku o ti da kan won ijo kolose ru the deception and the lies and the misinterpretation had made their hearts to be discouraged and depressed etan ati isi ati tumo oro olorun ati eko eke ti awon eyan mu wa si kolose o ti je ki okan won tu si ko pada and there are different things according to the revelation of scripture that happens to the heart when there is false doctrine when there is misinterpretation when there is false to the lie opolopo nkan ti o sele si okan ni a fi han wa ni iwe ni mo nigba ti a ba si oro olorun tumo nigba ti a ba mu etan tabi eko eke wonu okan lo number one the heart will be discouraged and fainting e kini ni nuru re ni pe okan suru re yo tan yo si ni idaya fo the colossians who had been believing that because we accepted the lord we believe in the lord now we are getting ready for heaven the false teachers came and they said no they must worship angels no they must go back to the rituals and ceremonies of the old testament the people will now get discouraged as if they had not done the correct thing in the past awon ejo kolose ti won tin ya yo tele ni okan won wi pe nisin sin yi ati gba jesus gege bi oluwa ati olugba lawa ire ti oro nbe fun wa sugbon ti awon eleko eke wa je jade ni ijo kolose kan so pe be ko en lati pada si ka ma si angeli ka ma si awon ebo inu ma je mo lai lai aru awon eniyan be okan wa wa ni idaya fu this false doctrine will also cause division in their heart they will have divided mind or double mind or division because one side they will want to go to the right on the other hand they will remember the false doctrine and want to go to the left it brought divided hearts in their me eleyi ti o tete le ri pe eko eke o ma mu iyapa iye meji wa sinu okan tori pe awon eniyan wa yi nigba ti ma fe lo si apa otun lojiji ni wa yo tun ran ti awon eko eke ti wa yo ju pe ya so wo si number 3 it will bring fear into the heart maybe we can we can continue following jesus obeying the new testament obeying the word of god and maybe even after we die with all this obedience and love and faith we can still perish and go to hell 
False doctrine will bring fear into the heart of the people that have been misled. Iketa ni pe e kweke o ma mu eru wonu okan. Won yo wa ma gbaro lokan won pe awa ti a ti da Jesu Oluwa gbo si an gboran ti a si ti otito di mu. Boya nigbati a ba ku ibi ti gbogbo e o yo ri sina ni ti a o se gbe. Nitori na e kweke o ma mu igaya wa si okan. It also brought anxiety over church in the heart, worry in the heart, worrying whether they were right or wrong. Worrying whether they were accepted to God or not, worrying whether they'll be able to make it or not, it brought anxiety to them when false doctrine came. And false doctrine misinterpretation or even misinformation can bring sorrow in the heart, heaviness in the heart, brokenness in the heart. Yes, it's true. It can even bring doubting and wanting to backslide. False teachers and false prophets, they aim at the heart of the people to confuse them, to perplex them, and to destroy them, to subvert them, to oppress the weak, weak hearts. And therefore, that is why Paul the Apostle said, The purpose of my ministry is to comfort your troubled heart. Confused, Oppressed and weak at heart, the Colossians now needed to be comforted and strengthened in their heart and reassured of the truth they had believed. And these are the things that Paul the Apostle did effectively in this epistle by praying for them, by teaching them, by counseling them. In Colossians chapter 4, verses 7 and 8. Colossians chapter 4, verses 7 and 8. All my special psychicals declare unto you who is the beloved brother and faithful minister and fellow servant in the Lord, for whom, whom I have sent unto you for the same purpose, that he might know, that he might know your state, your essence, and comfort your heart. Go, go, be in that you for me, me, tiki, ku, yo, je, ki, em, ara, ku, yo, lu, fe, at, yo, lo, to, en, ran, se, at, ye, le, be, ni, nu, o, lu, wa, en, ni, ti, mo, ti, ran, si, ni, ni, to, ri, e, yi, kan, nan, ki, e, yi, kle, ma, bi, at, yi, wa, Obviously, the hearts of these Colossians had been affected by the wrong notion, by the false doctrine that people had brought into their midst. And now Paul the Apostle was sending an epistle. He was even sending other ministers to reassure them, to comfort them, to establish them, and to strengthen them in their heart. And this is our ministry. When we see that false prophets and false teachers are confusing the people of God. They are discouraging and depressing the hearts of the people of God. They are bringing doubt and fear in the hearts of the people of God. And they are making the people of God now to halt between two opinions because of the erroneous things they are bringing to the midst of the people of God. Then the ministry will comfort and challenge and strengthen and establish the hearts of the people of God. Now, 
Corinthians chapter 1, verses 3 and 4. Blessed be God, even the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies, and the God of all comfort, who comforted us in all our tribulation, that we may be able to comfort them which are in any trouble by the comfort where we is, we ourselves are comforted of God. O lubuku ni oloro, ati baba Jesu Christi oluwa wa, baba iyonu, ati oloro iti nu gogo, anything to wa ninu, ninu gogo wa ala wa, ni pa iti nu na, ti afin tu awa ti tara wa ninu, na ti odo oloro wa, ti awa ti ole ma tu awa ti owa ninu wa, la ki wa ala ninu. What Paul the Apostle is saying is that he went through trouble and persecution, and suffering and tribulation. Some false preachers were telling Paul the apostle that he was laboring in vain because he did not teach them to keep the law of Moses and that all these works will eventually be for nothing. There will be no reward. But then God came to comfort him that he had sent him and he will be with him, and he will continue with him, and that God will make him to appear before all the people that he will appear, and his suffering will not be in vain. He was comforted. The same thing that was happening to the people at Colossae. They were telling them, you have believed in vain. If you don't serve angels, if you don't serve this one and that one, if you don't sacrifice, all your believing will be in vain. They too, they were being troubled. That so, believing in Christ, giving ourselves to the Lord, at the last day, everything will be in vain. They were troubled in heart. And Paul the Apostle said, Oh, those people have spoken to me before to you. And God came to comfort me. And now he comforted them in all their confusion. Oh, the Paul the Apostle is telling you, I want to let you know, 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 Another thing that he had in purpose or had in mind in ministry to them is point three. Brotherly love within a united church. If you look at Colossians chapter 2 verse 2. That their hearts might be comforted. Being knit together, united together in love. Brothers and sisters, there are some things we need to learn about false doctrine. False doctrine tends to cause division and selfishness among deceived people. Such division among the brethren affects various areas of our relationship. These false prophets were coming to Colossae and the lies they were telling them, the misinterpretation they were giving them was bringing division among the people of God. False doctrine always brings division. When somebody comes to you and he gives you false doctrine, it will lessen your love for the people of God. You will want to separate yourself from the people of God. It will lessen your commitment to Christ and to the people of God. The love and respect you add for the one who has been used to bring you to the fullness of the gospel. 
that love will decrease. Is that not what Paul's doctrine did in the Galatians church? Because Paul went there and gave them the gospel, the full gospel, the true gospel. But some other people now brought the law of Moses to them. And these people now did not have the same love they used to have for Paul the Apostle. They didn't have the love again. And in chapter 4 of Galatians verse 11, it said, I am afraid of you. Let's have bestowed upon you labor in vain. For labor in vain. It said in verse 14, my temptation which was in my flesh, ye despised not, nor rejected, but you received me as an angel of God, even as Jesus Christ. Where is then the blessedness you speak of? For I bear you record that if it had been possible, you would have plucked out your eyes, your own eyes, and have given them to me. And I might therefore become your enemy because I tell you the truth. They zealously affect you, but not well. Yea, they would exclude you that ye might affect them. It was a false teacher, it was the false prophet, and a false doctrine that came to Galatia that made the hearts of these people to be evil affected and to be separated from the minister who brought them to the gospel. False doctrine will affect us in various ways if we accept false doctrine. It will bring a division in our relationship between ministers and members in the church. It will bring division between husband and wife. When somebody gives wrong counseling to a wife, when somebody gives wrong advice to a husband, when somebody teaches something which is not balanced to a family, it will bring division among them. It will bring division will bring division between parents and children. Between masters and servants. In fact, false doctrine may even produce a divided personality in a single individual. You see, you are an individual by yourself. You are an individual by yourself and you have body, you have soul, you have spirit. All united together, false doctrine can make you neglect your body, can make you neglect your spirit, can make you make a difference between who you really are, tearing you apart and pulling you this way, pulling you that way, that you become almost a mad fellow. But the Holy Spirit ministers through Paul the Apostle that the church will remain united and remain in love. And thank God for a united church. One we have a privilege, the other one we have a responsibility.
visibility. Number one, you have a privilege to be edified in a loving United Church. Number two, you have the responsibility to love and to contribute your part to the church unity in Christ. Paul the Apostle said the purpose of my ministry is to keep you united together in love. Paul's doctrine is trying to divide you, but my ministry is to unite you in the love of God. Paul Colossians chapter 3 verse 14. Above all these things, put on charity, put on love, which is the bond of perfectness. Philippians chapter 2. From verse 2. Fulfill ye my joy, that ye be like-minded, having the same love, being of one accord and of one mind. John chapter 13 verses 34 and 35 A new commandment I give unto you that ye love one another as I have loved you that ye also love one another only sound doctrine will keep us together in that love. False doctrine will bring suspicion. False doctrine will be separating us from one another. False doctrine will bring pride. You will think that the false erroneous doctrine, those false teachers are now teaching you are superior to the basic cardinal doctrines of the Bible you have learned before. Some it is sound doctrine. The revelation of truth as it is in Christ that will keep us united in love together. By day shall all men know that ye are my disciples, if ye have love, one for another. If you no longer have love for one another, false doctrine has come in somewhere. If there is division and suspicion in your heart towards your fellow brother, towards your fellow sister in the church, there is a misinterpretation of the word of God, of the actions of other people somewhere in your heart. Number three, you have the responsibility to love your wife. If you do not have love for your wife or your husband, somebody has taught you false doctrine and you are meditating on something which is bred from the totality of the word of God. John chapter 17 verse 21 That they all may be one, as thou Father art in me, and I in thee, that they also may be one in us, that the world may believe that thou hast sent me. Colossians chapter 2. Paul the Apostle also spoke about assurance within the believer through spiritual knowledge. Colossians chapter 2 verse 2 And that their hearts might be comforted being knit together in love and unto all riches of the full assurance of understanding to the acknowledgement of the mystery of God and of the Father and of Christ. Colossians chapter 2 
When Paul's doctrine comes in, your ground under you will be shaky. Uncertainty will come to the heart. Your heart will lack conviction and assurance. This is what was happening to the Colossians. That now they were shaky. They were uncertain about the things they had understood and believed before. And Paul, the apostle, he had unshakable conviction. He knew the Lord. He had known the Lord. He had met the Lord. He had been to the third heavens. And the Lord was communicating to him and with him the gospel that he that he taught. And he said, these people are shaky and uncertain. Even though they are out of sight, my love for them, my ministry for them will not be diminished. I will write to them, I will pray for them, I will intercede for them, I will counsel them, I will challenge them so that they will have assurance through spiritual knowledge. And as these Colossians were passing through a turbulent period in their Christian in their Christian journey, Paul's ministry was peculiarly suited to bring this assurance through spiritual knowledge unto them. And this knowledge of the mystery of God will usher them into the riches of Christ. The same thing God does for us today. And the Spirit of God takes of the things of Christ and reveals to us and impresses them upon our hearts then we have peace and unshakable assurance. In First uh, Thessalonians chapter 1, verse 5. For gospel came not unto you in word only, but also in power and in the Holy Ghost, and in much assurance as ye know what manner of men we were among you for your sake. You can see there the association between knowledge and assurance. Ignorance brings uncertainty. Knowledge brings assurance. Second Timothy chapter 1 verse 12. For the which cause I also suffered these things. Nevertheless, I am not ashamed. For I know whom I have believed and am persuaded that he is able to keep that which I have committed unto him against that day. You can see over there the connection between persuasion and knowledge, that is, knowledge and assurance. In First uh, John chapter 5, Verse 9. If we receive the witness of men, the witness of God is greater. For this is the witness of God which has testified of his son. When God bears witness in your heart, doubt will flee away. When the Holy Spirit witnesses to your heart that you become a child of God, 
doubt and fainting will go away from your heart. If the false prophets have been visiting you and giving you their literature and giving you all their ideas, and now you are having doubts and depression, and you are not sure of what you believe, when the Holy Spirit will turn on the floodlight of the truth and revelation of Christ in your heart, all the doubts will vanish away. Assurance will come through spiritual knowledge. <laughs> Tonight we have seen the ministry of Paul the Apostle to the saints that are far away and out of sight. And we have seen that ministry benefiting us ourselves even here tonight. Troubled hearts have been comforted by the assuring promises of God. We have been reminded of the necessity of brotherly love in a united church. And the necessity of allowing the Holy Spirit to turn on the revelation of truth in our hearts so we can have unshakable, unmovable assurance in the law. Let's rise up now and go to the Lord in prayer. If your heart has been troubled by false prophets, confess it before the Lord and come back to the truth of the word of God. If backsliders have come to deceive you and they have come to shift you away from the assurance and the confidence you have and the love you have for the people of God in the church, you reject everything those lying backsliders have told you and take the revelation of truth in Christ as revealed to your heart and come to the assuring ground of the promises of God. Consecrate yourself to the Lord and receive the ministry that God has allowed me to have towards you even tonight. Talk fervently to the Lord and make be a better person, a better man, a better woman before you go out of this place tonight. If you call upon him, you remove the confusion in your heart and establish you in the faith more and more.